Our second application, which also uses first order differential equations, is to heat transfer. And you may go on to study heat transfer in more detail if you, for instance, study mechanical engineering. But this is the one of the most basic laws of heat transfer, that the temperature of an object changes in proportion to the difference between its temperature and the surrounding temperature. This is called Newton's Law of Cooling, named, of course, for Isaac Newton. Now, this is something that we kind of intuitively have a sense of. If, for instance, you leave a hot cup of coffee out on a cool countertop, it will lose heat to the surroundings because the surroundings are cooler and so its temperature will decrease. And if you pick up a cup of ice water or a cup of room temperature water that might still be slightly cooler than you, the ice water will feel colder because you're losing more heat to it. Because the difference between the temperature of your hand and the temperature of that ice cold water is larger than the difference between the temperature of your hand and the slightly cool water and so you'll lose more heat to the cup of ice water. So we have a sense of this that you start with the difference between the temperature of the two objects that are transferring heat to one another and then the rate of heat transfer, the rate at which the temperature changes depends on that difference. And it changes in proportion to that difference and that's an important key that when you have something changing proportionally there's a constant of proportionality. This is why, for instance, if you leave a wooden stick and a metal pipe out overnight in freezing temperatures, and then you go outside and pick the two up, they are actually at the same temperature, but the metal pipe will feel much colder because that constant of proportionality is much higher. That's because it's much more conductive. It heat conduction is higher. And so we talk about that proportion in this problem. That proportion depends on the materials and other related things that determine the conduction, the conductibility of heat between two objects. So a metal object conducts heat much better than a wooden object. So even if they're at the same temperature and you touch both of them, the metal object feels colder because of that higher conductivity, and that's that proportion. So there's two things going on here. One is the heat conduction rate, and one is the difference between the temperatures. In our problems, we'll just assume that the conduction rate is a constant. We'll call it K for this example, and then we're more interested in the difference between the temperatures for our purposes here. So in the simple example that I'll show here, we're going to assume that we're placing an object in an environment and that the environment's temperature is fairly constant. Now when you think about it, heat transfer happens when there's a temperature difference. Heat always flows from the hotter object to the colder object. So if you put a hot cup of coffee on a countertop, it'll conduct heat both through the coffee cup into the countertop and then also out through the top through convection. And there are all sorts of interesting details going on there. But realistically, when it loses heat, it also slightly raises the temperature of the environment. That's why if you pick up the hot cup of coffee and feel the countertop underneath it, it's slightly warmer than the countertop surrounding it. But for our purposes, we're going to assume that the environment is large enough that that temperature change is negligible. If you put a coffee cup in the air, it technically raises the temperature of the air, but if it's in a large enough room, that temperature change of the air is indistinguishable from a constant temperature. So we'll assume the temperature of the medium, the temperature of the surroundings is a constant for our problems. Uh, it gets slightly more complicated if you allow for all the temperatures to be changing. So again, we're dealing with a relatively simple version of this. Now I'm going to translate this statement here into a differential equation. When we read the temperature of an object, that's the thing we're solving for. So our function is going to be capital T of time. So we're measuring temperature. We're going to call it capital T, and then we'll use little t for time. 
And when we read the temperature of an object changes, immediately you should think derivative, rate of change. So T prime changes in proportion to something. So that's gonna equal a constant K times something. That's when you read a proportional change, that's a multiple of some constant and whatever follows. It changes in proportion to the difference between the temperature we're interested in, so that would be T, and the ambient temperature, the surrounding temperature, the temperature of the medium, which we're calling T sub M. So notice how we built that differential equation just by reading the statement above carefully and translating that into a mathematical formulation. Now you may see in some places where we will write a negative in front of this k. The reason for that is that if you want k to be a positive number, which you may or may not care about, but if you want k to be a positive number, you should have a negative here so that if t is larger than t sub m, then your temperature change will be negative so that your temperature of your object will decrease toward the ambient temperature. And if T is smaller than T sub M, then T prime will be positive so that your temperature will rise to the temperature of the surroundings. But if you don't include the negative, it just means that when you solve for K in a particular problem, K will be a negative value. So you may see some people write a negative there and some people don't. It really doesn't matter, but as long as you pick one version and stay consistent, the point is that the number here, whatever it is, will be negative, whether you think of it as negative k or whether you think of k as being a negative number. Either way works just fine. To solve this one, again, this is a separable equation. And all the examples of applications we've seen so far have been separable. That's not to say that all applications of differential equations are this simple, but simply that we're picking relatively basic applications, so they're relatively easy to solve. More complicated applications have much more complicated solution methods. But we can solve by separation. We can again write T prime as DT over D little t, and then K times T minus TM. And then we can divide T minus TM on both sides and multiply little dt on both sides. If we integrate, the right hand side just becomes KT plus C. The left hand side becomes LN of T minus TM. And so to solve, we would raise E to the power of both sides. So we would have T minus TM equals E to the KT plus C. But again, we can write E to the KT plus C as E to the KT times E to the C or A E to the KT. Then if we add TM to both sides, we get something like this. Then we can actually solve for A if we're given an initial temperature. So if we're given an initial temperature T0, whatever number that ends up being, then we can have T0 equals Tm plus A e to the k times zero. And so with a little work, we can figure out that A is T0 minus Tm. So it actually turns out that our full model is Tm plus T0 minus Tm e to the kt. we would be able to measure the initial temperature and we can measure the temperature of the medium, the surroundings, pretty easily. The only thing left is to find K and the way you would do this, like you would do in a pre-calculus class, is we would measure the temperature at two points. Say we have the initial temperature and then the temperature a little bit later and from that we could solve for K and figure out the rate at which temperature is changing, the rate at which heat is transferring. Again, in reality, that depends on the materials you're dealing with and other things like airflow and so on. But if we could find that K value, 
then we could predict the temperature later in time, or we could also predict when the temperature would reach a certain value.